Uh, good morning everyone, uh, my name's Katie and I am one of the elephant keepers here at Chester Zoo. Um, just want to welcome you all to the Elephant House today. Um, due to the cold weathers and the, the snow that we've had this morning, uh, we have decided to keep the elephants nice and toasty in the warmth. Um, some people um, always forget that the Elephant House is actually here. Um, on a normal day when we are open, you can access it before you actually get into the zoo. So just something to, to remember when we are back open and functioning as normal. So here at the zoo, um, we have a group of Asian elephants. They are considered endangered in the wild. Um, so it's really important that um, we try and conserve them as best we can. Um, and behind me here, uh, we have some of our so-called highway family. Um, so the uh, large elephant um, eating from the hay net at the minute, um, her name is Sindara, um, and she is mother to Indali, who is the, the smaller elephant in front of her. Um, and then, hopefully you can see, we've got our youngest member of the group, um, little Riva, um, over there to the right. Um, she is um, Sindara's youngest daughter. Um, she is almost a year old um, and is currently... Um, weighing um, around the 300 kilogram mark, um, so she's getting quite big. Um, and Dali um, is, has recently just turned four, um, and Sindara is in her um, late teens, um, just to give you an idea of the age range between them all. Um, now, there are two different species of elephants. Um, there's the Asian elephant that we have here, and the African elephant. Um, now, most people recognise the two different species um, by the size of their ears. So African elephants have the big ears and Asian elephants have the small ears. Um, another difference between the two species is that all African elephants have tusks, so they have um, the recognisable ivory. Asian elephants, on the other hand, only some of the males will have tusks. But as you can, hear, um, as you can see, um, Sindara, when she lifts her head up, um, she has two very small tusks, which we actually call tushes, so we refer to them as tushes rather than tusks. They are very similar to tusks, they're just a lot smaller, um, and they won't grow um, much larger than what Sindara has, um, that you can see there. Um, and Dali, her oldest daughter, does have some small tushes too. Riva, at the minute, is still too young, um, so she may or may not develop tushes in the future. We'll just have to, to wait and see. Um, we do have um, another young male, um, his name is Anjan, and he is half brother to the two young girls here. Um, he's over uh, in the background at the moment, we'll try and get him on camera fairly soon. Um, Anjan does um, have um, very small tusks, so he's quite easy to identify between um, from and Dali. Um, he is slightly, still slightly smaller than, than Indy. Um, but he does have those longer tusks, um, which will hopefully develop into full, um, impressive um, tusks in the future as he gets larger. Um, Anjan um, is, again, slightly younger than Indy. Um, so we've got three calves, um, very close in age. Um, it's really nice um, to have um, a, a group of youngsters. It gives them lots of play opportunity. Uh, the babies, that's all they do all day, is, is play and play and play. Um, Indy here has been a great um, help to her mum uh, when Riva was born. She's very protective of her little sister. Um, and it's a really good learning opportunity for Indali to see how her mum is with Riva in order for her to learn and develop those skills of being a mother in the future. Um, we do eventually hope that Indali is going to get to that stage where um, she um, can breed. Um, so learning all these um, mothering skills um, will be um, great when she does come to have her own babies in the future. Um, and then we also have um, Maya, um, who's also on the right. She's eating from another hay net. She's quite a large elephant. Um, we tend to call her the Disney elephant because um, she looks like something out of the Jungle Book. Um, she is the largest elephant in our group, um, apart from Angbo, our male elephant, who you won't be able to see at the moment. Um, 
Maya is unrelated to the rest of the group, so the rest of the group are all part of the highways, but Maya is not. Um, she is in her late 50s. Um, we don't know exactly what age she is, but we, are, um, we think she was born in the 70s. Um, she's quite a character. She's quite feisty. Um, she's quite dominant at times. She's very food motivated. Um, so she does like to always make sure that she has the best of the best. Um, although she's not part of the family and doesn't really have a role within the group, um, the babies do um, spend quite a lot of time around her. Um, so I suppose she has a bit of an ante to them, uh, whether she wants to be or not, um, is up for debate. Now, as you can see at the minute, um, Sundara is eating from one of the hanging um, hay nets that we have in the house. Uh, we have several of these dotted all around the inside enclosure and we do have them outside as well. Um, the reason that we hoist the food into the air and um, encourage the elephants to have to reach up to get access to the food um, is to, to make them work that little bit harder for it. Um, so when Sundara, um, when she reaches back up, you'll see that she uses um, her trunk um, in order to, to pull the hay and the straw from the hay net above. So that means that she's working all those muscles in her trunk, there she goes, um, as well as the muscles in her shoulders, her neck and her upper, upper back. So she's getting quite a good workout from having to access the food in this way. So you can see she's really twisting the end of that trunk to, to pull, pull the hay out. The trunk is just purely muscles, and um, there's no bone in the trunk. Um, and she has roughly 100,000 muscles in that trunk alone, and that's more than we have in our entire bodies. So it's really important that we make sure that sh um, the elephants are using that trunk where we can to make sure that they're, they're using those muscles um, and continuing to develop strength in the muscles. As you can see, um, obviously the little ones can't reach the hay nets, um, but Reva there is developing her little trunk skills um, by picking up all the straw and the hay that her mum drops on, on the floor. Um, so when they're born, they do need to learn how to use the trunk. Um, it's not just a, um, a thing that they know how to do. So she's been watching her mum and her sister and her brother um, and Maya to, to understand how she needs to use it and, and how to, to manipulate it properly. Um, she's, get, she's really good with it now. Um, initially, she didn't quite know what to do with it, um, so it is, it is a, a bit of an art form. Um, so in the hay nets is a mixture of straw and hay. Um, this is um, a big, big part of the diet in captivity. Um, we mix the straw and the hay um, just to, to try and um, keep it a bit different for them. The hay is where they get the nutrition from. The straw is just a bit of a bulk um, to, to bulk it out. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we've just mixed it up in there um, and this is um, what they'll spend a lot of their time doing um, today is, is feeding from these nets. Um, by putting it in the hay net, it does mean that it lasts a lot longer as well. Um, elephants are designed to be eating a lot of the day. Um, so we try and feed little and often um, in order to avoid them gorging on food and then not having food for long periods of time. Um, as I said, they're designed to have food constantly moving through their system. So by having the, the hoists and the hay nets in this way, it means they've always got access to something um, that they can um, munch on and keep them going throughout the day. So everyone's quite calm and peaceful, um, getting on nicely. Um, so Chester Zoo does support um, the Assam project um, out in India, um, where um, they are trying to deal with a human-elephant conflict. Um, so out in Assam, um, villages have popped up in various areas where elephants have lived for a long time. Um, those villages are then growing crops and things that the elephants like to eat. Um, and this um, means the elephants are then entering villages um, and destroying um, not only crops but also property um, of the local people. 
Um, and the locals really do want to live in harmony with these animals rather than against them. But when there are problem individuals, it has led to, to that human elephant conflict. Um, so what the zoo is trying to do through the Assam project is trying to educate the local people and how they can um, live alongside these animals peacefully, um, but still um, be able to, to live in harmony, if you like. Um, so some of the um, different methodologies that they're using out there um, is things uh, like um, chili fences. Um, the elephants don't really like chilies, um, so what they're doing is actually putting paste, chili paste, on the fences. Um, and that um, the elephants don't want to go into that area, so um, it detracts um, and makes them move around the area rather than into the area. Um, they're also encouraging people to um, grow things that elephants don't necessarily want to eat. Um, again, such as chilies, um, but also other alternatives. Um, they're also going into communicate, uh, communities and educating um, the children um, in order to to make them understand the animals and why they do what they do. Um, and it's all, all about supporting, as I said, that harmony um, between, um, between the two in order to try and protect um, this um, endangered species. Um, and, that's, and that's what the, the zoo project is, is trying to achieve. Um, so it is, it is really important um, in order to protect these animals in their natural habitat. Um, the group here at the zoo act as ambassadors for their wild counterparts. Um, so by being here, they are representative of the wild population um, and raising awareness um, and educating you guys at home um, to want to protect um, such amazing species as the elephants. Shall we take a wander down there? So here we've got um, Anjan on the, the right hand side and then Maya, obviously the large elephant eating from, from the neck here. Uh, and then I think that's Indy um, that's just come along as well to try and steal some of the hay that Maya's dropping on the floor. Um, as you can see, um, Anjan, um, those little tusks that I mentioned early, earlier, so it's quite easy to identify. Um, elephants, uh, Asian elephants specifically, are um, are endangered for a number of reasons. Um, so it's to do with habitat loss, um, due, due to uh, poaching, um, it's due to that human ele elephant conflict that I already mentioned. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things that um, are that these elephants are up against. Um, um, so yeah, so the more that we can do and the more that we can encourage conservation in their um, local wild areas, um, the more that we can protect these guys for the future. Um, so Anjan's our little male elephant. Um, male elephants are called bulls, females are called cows, and the youngsters are called calves. So yeah, so as I said, Anjan is a little, a little male. Um, if all the other elephants you can see here are, um, are females, are cows. Um, Ang Bo, who is our, our big bull, our breeding male, um, he is on an offshore area currently at the moment. Um, he, within the house, remains separate from, from the rest of the group. But outside on the main paddock, um, we would mix him on most days um, in order for him for him to remain a sociable uh, male. It's also really good for Anjan um, to have his dad around so he can learn how to be a bull um, because eventually he is, fingers crossed, going to become a breeding bull himself. Um, it's also really good um, because the males um, do play um, a lot. Um, 
I know that Anjan has got to the size that he has. Um, he is now more of a playmate to his dad. Um, so they do have a little bit of a tussle now and again, um, which is really nice. It's really nice to see and um, to see them build that relationship. And hopefully that will grow stronger as um, Anjan gets um, bigger in size. The elephants will be remaining indoors for the rest of the day. Um, so that does mean that we have to um, manoeuvre them around the house. Um, obviously, as I mentioned, because of the cold weather, um, we prefer to keep them indoors um, just because we can maintain the elephant house at a constant um, warm temperature. Um, obviously, these guys naturally don't come from cooler climes, um, so it's important that we maintain them um, at a a nice 18 degrees Celsius. Um, so we'll, we'll manoeuvre them around the house in order for us to do all the, the husbandry um, side of things. Um, as you can imagine, um, a group of elephants, of um, the six elephants that we have here, um, they eat a lot uh, and they make a lot of mess. Um, so that's what most of our days are spent doing, is um, cleaning up after them. Um, so normally, on a, a good weather day, we'd send them outside and then we'd access the house. But because we're having to manoeuvre them within the house, um, we have to do area by area um, for, our, for our safety um, and just to ensure that they stay happy um, and have got plenty to, to keep them going. Um, another big part of their diet is what we call browse, um, and that's tree branches. Um, you'll probably see a few left over in there if you, if you take a closer look. Um, they have eaten most of the stuff that we put in last night. Um, so as I said, browse is um, effectively just tree branches. Um, this is as close to their natural diet as we could possibly get. So in an ideal world, it would be the only thing that we'd feed them. Um, but in the captive situation, we can't provide them um, with enough. Uh, and that's where the hay and the straw comes in. We try and give them a variety of tree branches, um, depending on what we can get hold of. Um, they particularly like things like willow and bamboo um, and also the really sharp spiky stuff like hawthorn um, which for us keepers is a nightmare to work with but the elephants uh, seem to really really enjoy it. Um, there's obviously certain trees that we can't give them um, that are um, poisonous so we just always have to double check and be careful that we're not feeding anything out that might cause them any issues. Um, we tend to plant the tree branches in the sand, um, so they have to pull them up. So again, it's just getting them to, to work those um, muscles in the, in the trunk, um, again, in another way um, than just overreaching um, overhead to get access to the, access to the hay there. Um, as you can see, we've got a lot of sand within the house. Uh, the reason that we um, have chosen sand as a substrate is because um, we can um, constantly change it. So we've got a digger on section that we can move the sand around and we can bank it up um, and make beds for the elephants. Um, so you can see there's quite a lot of banked areas um, around the enclosure. Um, it's a common misconception that elephants don't ever lie down. Um, in fact, they will lie down to sleep um, and they tend to sleep on their sides um, rather than on their, their sterns. So they don't tuck their legs underneath them um, like horses or other hoofstock might do. Um, they don't sleep for that long, despite being such big animals. Um, they only sleep for around uh, four hours a night. The babies may be a little bit longer just because they need a bit more rest um, than the adults do. And they won't sleep for a constant four hours. Uh, they might go down on their sides um, for maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, then get back up, eat a little bit more, move around a little bit more, and then um, go back down. Um, so they might have lots of little sleeps throughout the night. Um, and by banking up the sand, we just provide them with a little bit of more comfort. Um, being such big animals, such heavy animals, um, it's quite hard to get up and down, um, so having that slope does just um, provide a little bit of support as well where that's concerned. Um, and it just gives them that comfortable night rest that everybody, let's face it, needs. Um, just to give you an idea of the, the weights then, um, Maya, our largest elephant here, um, is just under 5,000 kilograms. Um, she's actually almost similar weight to our bull elephant, um, so even though he is a bit taller, 
um, weight, uh, they are of a compatible, a compatible weight. Um, and then Anjan, who is next, next to her, um, he is about 12 and a half thousand kilos. Um, so as you can see, there's a little bit of a, a difference, um, difference there. Um, little Reva over on the right, um, she's just having a little play, play with a log. Um, so we put various things in their enclosure just to give them more, more to do. Um, so we've got logs all over the place and um, you can see most of them have now been stripped of all the bark. That's the elephants have done that. Um, so the, those tree branches, th that browse that I mentioned earlier, they will eat the entirety of the branch. So not just the leaves and the greenery, but also they'll strip all the bark off of the trees um, and they'll take it down to, to its bare its, its bare bones really. And they will also eat that if, if they like the tree enough to want to, to demolish the whole thing. Um, that is one of the purposes of those um, tusks, um, of those tissues that they have. And then the, um, the logs and things just act as um, furniture, if you like. Um, so we can move the logs around. Um, we can, um, if there's holes and stuff in the logs, we can hide things in the logs for them. Um, and again, it's just making sure that we've got plenty of different options um, to keep them interested. So that brings us to the end of the Elephant Live today. Um, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Um, the next live will be at 12 o'clock and it will be with the Garials. Thank you very much. <laughs>